Racial disparity continues to plague Florida's prison system. In fact, it's gotten worse. We looked at the data and found black inmates outnumber every other race, despite being a minority group in the state. The divide only widening in recent years, but those working to restore balance tell state capital reporter Forrest Saunders this may be the year to make it happen. His time behind bars was a learning opportunity. It was a an experience that has really been, um, I would say it was my own educational journey. The lessons guiding former yeah, felon Greg right. James, now a Tallahassee pastor and advocate for inmate voting rights. Prison institution as a whole, it was a higher learning facility for me. It also taught him that the prison system has a great deal of racial injustice. If by chance we try to deny it, then we're walking in a state of total darkness, but you can blatantly see the fight that we're in. You've probably seen the national stats before. Blacks make up about 14% of the U.S. population, but about 33% of those incarcerated. Did you know in Florida, the disparity is wider? The latest state corrections data showing about 47% of Florida's inmates are black, despite making up only 17% of our population. Blacks even surpassing the 40% of white inmates, though Florida is predominantly white. Unfortunately, that's the way it has been for many years. State Representative Diane Hart says she's been working for years to tackle the problem with help of lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. A key is amending Florida's sentencing laws. It is a known fact that black and brown people get far larger, longer sentences than anyone else. And that's why you see the huge disparity. And add to that research showing black offenders are more likely to get arrested in the first place. Just last year, Florida state criminologists reported finding the odds of prosecution were on average 3% greater for black offenders compared to white offenders, despite having worked together to commit a crime. It's the same offense, it's the same victims happening at the same time in the same place. Right, so none of those things can be used to explain any difference that you find. Hart has pushed several laws she hopes will correct the disparities. One of them from last session would have cut the length of time nonviolent offenders need to serve from 85 to 65 percent of their sentence. Tough on crime Republicans stopped the bill, siding with law enforcement worried early release was too dangerous. I don't see how putting more of these repeat offenders back in our communities before they're reformed is going to make our communities safer. Undeterred, Hart says she'll try again next year, hopeful the climate has changed. <laughs> Protests and rallies still filling streets across the nation, she says, are hard to ignore. Nobody can ignore it. I mean, it's been put in our face and we have to deal with many of these issues. Joining her, James. While he'll be fighting for the restoration of ex-felon voting rights, he says it all harkens back to the same goal, removing racial injustice from the prison system. Even though we are the, the majority inside of the prison system. And even though we are the, the minority that's being released, there's so much value in, in us. At the Capitol, I'm Forrest Saunders. Tonight, our Florida investigative reporter takes a look at the racial diversity within law enforcement agencies around our state. And what Katie Legrone found is, despite years of talking about change, black officers remain a minority on the streets. Tonight, she speaks to two police chiefs who have faced their own color barriers to learn why. In the predominantly white and male world of law enforcement, years of battling for change is slowly starting to shift as leadership in law enforcement finally brings some color to the table. They are two police chiefs. Law enforcement has always been a white male dominant profession. Who represent two sides of Florida. We're not hiring minority officers just so they can work in a minority community. But both share the same skin color. I've been in meetings and conferences, small conferences, where it's not many people that look like me. And, and, and that's unfortunate. And the same battle because of it. When I'm wearing this uniform, they see me as one person. And when I take this uniform off, they see me as another person. St. Petersburg Police Chief Anthony Holloway and Delray Beach Police Chief Javaro Sims are among Florida's black police chiefs. In a state where 17% of its citizens are black, we found less than 10% of law enforcement officers patrolling the streets here are black, according to the latest demographic data kept by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. We do want to try to mirror our community, but again, is trying to find those qualified candidates. In St. Petersburg in the 1960s, a dozen black officers known as the Courageous 12 sued the city over unequal treatment and ultimately won. Today, with a city population that's 22 percent black, 15 percent of its police officers are black. But in Delray Beach, a smaller city, 
31 percent of its population is black, yet just 13 percent of officers are black, according to the latest state data. Does that work for you? No, it doesn't work for me. We looked at a dozen Florida law enforcement departments with at least 100 white officers and found around the state the percentage of black officers can be two or three times lower than the percentage of black citizens they serve. These chiefs explain why. The way things that are going on right now, it's hard to find an African-American officer who wants to be a police officer. I think a lot of African-Americans specifically uh, shy away from law enforcement because of the stigma between law enforcement and the African-American community or the minority community in general. So you have to find a way to break down some of those barriers which for them means recruiting as early as high school at black colleges, job fairs, ads in minority magazines, and attending community events in minority neighborhoods. Chief Sim says since he became chief last year, more than 70% of his new officer hires are minorities, nine black. Yes, yeah, definitely a personal goal. A goal both recognize will be a challenge to reach as long as incidents, including Michael Brown and George Floyd, continue to happen. That African-American or that minority we hire, he or she really has to have thick skin. I'm Katie Legrone reporting. It's a hard talk, a sad talk. He's driving now. We talk about, literally rehearse what to do if he's ever pulled over. And it's been happening for generations. How black parents are helping their children express their feelings and thoughts during this time of unrest.